Hello, my name's Ray Chambers and I'm an ICT slash computing teacher at Uppingham Community College in the Rutland area. And what I'm going to do today is just walk you through the We Are Cooking tutorials, uh, which are part of the switched on computing scheme of work. So over the next couple of slides, I'll be talking you through some ways and some methods that you can deliver the content to your students. So in this unit, we're going to be introducing algorithms to our students. So we need to kind of explain to them that algorithms are a detailed set of instructions. They're not ambiguous. For example, if you wanted to say to somebody, turn, you would have to give them the number of degrees they were turning so that they didn't keep turning around in circles. Now, uh, we're going to be using recipe cards uh, so you could bring in some recipes from home, uh, but we're going to be using the internet to help their search techniques as well. Uh, but the software that we'll be using is PowerPoint, and uh, you could use Microsoft Word, it's an optional one. And they'll need digital cameras because they'll be taking photographs, uh, microphones, they can be either USB or built in. Uh, and hopefully we're going to have a recipe book containing text, photos and audio instructions afterwards. So all students should be able to be accessible to this. So before you start this, you might want to think about what's accessible to you, what's available, what can you get hold of? Can you get hold of cake? Can you get hold of uh, biscuit recipes? What about pizza? So things that are easy for your students to complete because you don't want to make it too difficult for them. Um, maybe even sandwiches um, and maybe getting some of the ingredients beforehand before you start this unit of work. Now this unit of work really kind of links into any subject. Now we're using recipes and cooking to kind of get our point across for this. But you could really link it into any of the subjects really. Now in computing they're going to figure out what algorithms are and they're also going to create some digital content. So we've still got some of the ICT original stuff there. But for example if you wanted to map this into science you could talk about an algorithm to do a scientific experiment. Uh, you could also do an algorithm in design to kind of plan out how you're going to cut something out. So there's all sorts of ways you could link this into other subjects. Now while doing this, they'll be expected to do a number of different things. So obviously they'll develop their understanding of what an algorithm is, and that's the key point. Uh, but they'll be taking photographs, they'll be recording sound. Uh, they'll have to give people the instructions so that other people can follow them. And you could do some fun unplugged activities with this. So you could actually uh, blindfold the students and play blind man's uh, bluff, where you can spin them around and get them to give instructions to get them to another part of the room. Um, but you can use all sorts of uh, materials to do this. Uh, they'll be exploring the different media available. So uh, we suggested PowerPoint. Um, you might find an alternative to use there. Um, but there's also you can evaluate how successful this set of instructions are at the end by getting students to carry out each other's recipes. Now the resources you need are quite flexible. There shouldn't be too much preparation. Uh, but if you are having uh, difficulty with the internet and your students can't get access to a website on a particular day, you might find it useful uh, for, you, for you to have some recipe cards at hand for the students to follow. Um, but here's some examples of simple things that the students can make. Um, I've left off their sandwiches, uh, but think about what you're going to need in terms of what's on those recipes for when you decide to start making it. So like I said before, you might want to get the ingredient and the example recipe, but have you thought about checking if uh, some of your students have allergies? If you're planning on doing something with nuts in it, it might be uh, a bad idea if there's students that have an allergy in the room. Um, if When you're making the sandwich, make sure you've got all your ingredients. Um, and it might be a good idea to see if you can find a teacher that's willing to be programmed. Obviously the students will have fun with it as well if they're telling each other to do certain things, but uh, I find if a teacher is uh, willing to make a fool of themselves and kind of be programmed, the kids get a lot more out of it. Um, and then obviously a digital camera and tablet devices to take pictures would be useful. So the first kind of step, the first lesson that you'll be doing is what is an algorithm? Now the good thing about this is that you can relate it to any activity that the students do on a day-to-day -day basis. So what, for example, uh, you can share, share instructions that you do on a day-to-day -day basis. So for example, uh, getting ready for work, um, 
And you can explain to your students that computers aren't actually that smart. They only do what we tell them to do. So, for example, if we told a computer to turn off, it would turn off. But if we wanted a computer to do a specific job, we have to give it detailed instructions. Um, so in this lesson, they're going to have the opportunity to make their own algorithm and uh, they're go and you can t explain to them that they're going to be chefs and they're going to actually create their own algorithms to tell someone how to do a particular recipe. All right. Now, in this lesson, to kind of get your point across, you could even make some of your own algorithms up for like getting ready for work or tying your shoes or making breakfast. But um, it would be a good idea to get the students to create a variety of algorithms for everyday tasks that they do. And they could be like games in the playground. Uh, they could be like uh, getting the class ready because uh, some students are like helpers in your classroom and they get like the equipment out. Um, and they're going to create these um, on day to day things. Now at home, uh, they could explain some of their favorite games in more detail but they could also do some homework to write an algorithm which details how they kind of wake up and get ready for school. Uh, it might be that their, their mum and dad wake them up and they like toss and turn in bed, but all these detailed instructions are useful that they explain them. So the next task, once they've kind of understood what an algorithm is, they're gonna share uh, some examples of sample recipes on the board. So you'll be able to show your students some recipes uh, I find that uh, BBC have got some really, really good uh, recipes available uh, that are safe for children. Um, and we're going to watch a clip in a minute that shows a children programming their teacher to make a sandwich. Now, you can attempt this yourself, or you can get the students to do it, or you could do both. Uh, but before you do this, you will need to make sure that you've got the sandwich making tools such as your knife, uh, your bread. Uh, your butter, uh, but if you want to keep it safe, I recommend doing this activity with uh, plastic knives. Uh, we can use bread, jam, butter. Keep it simple so you don't have too many uh, different sources in the class when you first try it. So in the lesson, you're going to get the students to either program you to begin with, so it's up to you if you do this or show them the video. Um, the students are going to program each other to carry out the simple tasks um, and it could be put it, putting on shoes, sharpening a pencil. Um, it could be like you're, you might want to make them move around the room or do an obstacle course for them to make it a bit more fun. Um, but you'll need bread if you want to do that activity. Now for homework, uh, you might want to set a challenge for the students to program a member of their family. Um, and there's also an opportunity for, for bring your own device here because you could get the students to record their parents while, or the, any family member while the students are given the instruction and then they can bring their own device into the school and they can kind of get that digital skill there of exporting the video content onto their computer. Um, but you could also create your own kind of worksheet that's got a list of algorithms, a list of detailed instructions and you could put some problems in there so uh, something that might make the activity go wrong and see if the students can kind of decompose that and break it up a bit. Pick up knife with right hand. Using right, using the knife, um, scoop, some, scoop some butter and then spread it on the, the bread and give it a slice of bread. Scoop butter, spread it on bread. <laughs> Right hand, pick up bread slice. Lower down, drop. Lower down, drop. <laughs> lower down. You want robot to lower himself down and drop on floor? Lower down, bread. <laughs> lower down bread. Left hand, put bread slice down on plate. Left hand, put bread slice down on plate. Right hand. Remove butter lid. Right hand, remove butter lid. Scoop butter. Scoop jam out of the jam jar with right hand. Scoop jam out of the jam jar with right hand. Pick up bread. 
with right hand. Take out bread with right hand. Put bread on plate. Put bread on plate. You said on the floor. <laughs> Open, with your right hand, open the jam lid. Right hand, open twist the jam it. lid. Twist it. <laughs> right hand, twist jam lid. <laughs> error, error. <laughs> Cannot compute. <laughs> Left hand in the butter. <laughs> Cut up a slice of bread. Oh dear. Cut up a slice of bread. Cut up a slice of bread. Cutting up a slice of bread. Cutting up. Put down buttered it, right hand. Spread butter. Spread butter on bread slice with knife. Bread, butter on bread slice with knife. Cannot compute, have not picked up knife yet. Oh no, emergency overload! <laughs> Trying to spread butter with knife when I haven't got one. <laughs> um, pick up bread and put it on plate. Right hand, pick up bread and put it on plate. Now, thinking about copyrights, a good thing to introduce at an early age because I find in uh, secondary school that many students to this day still just copy and paste off the internet and don't really acknowledge the source. Uh, so, but what we're going to do in this lesson is we're going to find a website that shows the students how to make the recipe and we're going to show them how they can copy and paste onto a blank Word document and they're going to make a poster and we're going to kind of talk to the students and talk to them about whether it's acceptable to say that the recipe was theirs or not. Now for your more advanced students, um, we're also going to show you uh, which is an optional activity and isn't actually in the switched on sample. Uh, but we're going to show you how you can teach your students how to reference some of the websites that they've got materials from. So the task that goes with this really would get your students to make a poster of their recipe. Now once they've finished their recipe and they've finished formatting it and uh, they've said where they've got the information from, you might want to get some of your higher ability students to kind of use the referencing in Microsoft Word. Now uh, the video on the next slide will show you how to do that, so if you want to carry it out with your students you can do that. Now. Uh, students could actually make posters on copyright at home and do a little bit of background research if you wanted for homework or they could come in with a list of sources from home that they have acknowledged uh, that they can use in future tasks so it might be images and they can say where they've got it from. So at this point you might have shown your students how they can start to get some of their sources uh, and you might, for some of your higher ability students, want to introduce kind of referencing to them. So say for example, your students have got their recipe here. So recipe, recipe two, recipe three. Now what you can do is for each recipe that they found, you can add, you can go to references and you can insert a footnote. So maybe recipe one I've got from one website, so I'm going to put a footnote there. I'm going to give that a footnote, and I'm going to give that one a footnote as well. Right, sorry, an end note as well. Now, what this means now is they need sources. So each of those, if I go to 
manage sources, all right, uh, and go to insert citation and add new source, I can add that website. So from this drop down list here, I can find website, say it's from uh, the BBC, uh, BBC cupcake recipe, name of website, cupcake recipe, year that the student found it, 2014, month August, day, that was say the 5th, 05, and then the website address. So if I click OK, there you go, that's put a source in there. And the more and more you add in, eventually, you can actually create a bibliography. And it creates all those references for you. So you could try and do that with some of your high ability students so that they've got some way of keeping reference of all their sources. So in this lesson today, uh, you might want to use film clips from cookery TV shows so you can show the students kind of like how things are made so they've got an idea of breaking down the order. Um, so you're going to get the students to work in small groups to make a sandwich, um, but you'll need to show the students how to use the digital cameras uh, if they've never used them before. And what you can do once you split them into groups of four and five is you can actually delegate uh, different members of the group to be different uh, things. So you could have the cook, the note taker, the photographer, uh, you could have the uh, group leader to keep an eye on the time. So make sure you get the students to switch up roles. Uh, but once, once they've made the sandwich and they've taken all the pictures, you'll need to make sure the group explains what has happened. So, so what you could do is get your students to watch a clip of a chef cooking on TV to kind of familiarise themselves with the vocabulary that they use. That way when the students are given instructions, they are detailed in what they say. But you could also get the students to research sandwiches from around the world and you could use the referencing that I taught you earlier. Now in terms of homework, you could maybe they could watch somebody at home preparing a meal or video of someone preparing a meal and they could also watch a TV show to kind of get the idea. Now on the slide you're going to see next, I've found a clip of a kids TV show on YouTube um, and it's very much based at their age and it shows them how to kind of put a recipe together uh, and it's just for a simple tuna sandwich. Um, so uh, see what you think, and if you want to use this uh, with your students, you can, as it's a good intro to showing them some of the instructions they might need. And I'm Tula. And we are the Little Cooks. Today, we're going to show you how to prepare... A piano with couscous. What? No, Telmo. Okay. A couscous with a piano. <laughs> no, we're going to make a tuna sandwich. Tuna sandwich. Monkey boom! <laughs> then let's go fish a tuna. We'll ply the ocean's waves in search of the giant tuna to make our delicious tuna sandwich. That's not necessary, Telmo. We can buy canned tuna in the supermarket. What a shame. I really wanted to go fishing for tuna. Right. Well, no matter. Let's make a delicious tuna sandwich. And for dessert, a mango and pineapple shake. Great! Let's go to the jungle to look for mangoes and pineapples for the shake. Telmo, we can also buy mangoes and pineapples in any supermarket. Well, what's up with those supermarkets? Because of them, I'll never become an explorer. Telmo... What? Let's go over the ingredients we need for the tuna sandwich and the mango and pineapple shake. Our young cooks are waiting for us. Alright. Well, to make a tuna sandwich, we're going to need... Cheese! Ketchup, tuna and oil, sliced bread, lemon juice, mayonnaise, and 
for our delicious mango and pineapple shake. Mango! Pineapple and syrup. Yogurt. And ice cubes. Let's get to work. To start, we'll take a bowl and place eight pieces of cheese and one can of tuna. Tuna, how about we sing the tuna song? The tuna song? Yes, it's very simple. Tell Mo, there is no tuna song. Of course there is. Tuna, tun, 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 tuna, tun, 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 Tell Mo, it's better if we go on with the recipe. Okay. And now, I'm going to mix it well. In the meantime, Telmo, you can add three tablespoons of ketchup. All right. And the juice of half of a lemon. Okay. Good, this is already done. Now, we just spread it on the bread. That's right, we each take a slice of bread. There go the two slices of bread. Very good, we spread the top of the slice of bread with tuna, cheese, and ketchup. All right. It's done! Boom boom, it's so good! Mm, 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 this is so good! Tell me you're a glutton! I know! What's left to do? To place on top another slice of bread smeared with mayonnaise. Here I go! This is done! Super! And now to make the mango and pineapple shake! Yes! We need the blender. Let's put a mango that has been peeled and cut by our grown-up and a sliced pineapple in syrup. All right. You have to be very careful because the blender is dangerous. Your grown-up has to know what you are doing at all times. We need a yogurt. I'll put it in. It looks like this is done. We have everything, right, Tula? I think so. Oh no, we've forgotten the ice cubes. Oh, I thought we were missing something. <laughs> well, we have to get the ice cubes from the freezer. I'll go. All right. <laughs> Tell Mo, be careful because they're very cold. Of course, <laughs> they're ice cubes. We put in six ice cubes. Oh, here we go. Oh, darn it, darn it. While Telmo plays with these things, let's ask our grown-up to blend all of our ingredients. Grown-up! Can you blend the fruit, please? And while our grown-up finishes our delicious shake, let's review the ingredients that we've used. Ingredients for the tuna sandwich for two people. Four slices of bread, eight little cheeses, three tablespoons of ketchup, one can of tuna in oil, juice of half of a lemon, and mayonnaise. Ingredients were a mango and pineapple shake for two people. One really ripe mango, one slice of pineapple and syrup, one yogurt, and six ice cubes. Did you find them, Telmo? No, I can't find them. It's as if they, like, disintegrated, disappeared. There's only some water left here. <laughs> Maybe they've been kidnapped. Something or someone has seized our ice cubes. Yeah, yeah. I'm beginning to see it clearly, Tula. The water is a signal. They've wanted to leave a message. Of course, your ice cubes have become water because of the heat. Ice cubes are made of frozen water, and when you place them in an environment with temperature above 32 degrees Fahrenheit, they melt and become water once again. That's what everyone thinks. <laughs> But it doesn't look good to me. I'm gonna keep looking just in case. Ice cubes! Ice cubes! Tula, this tuna sandwich is delicious! Ah, goodbye, my friends!
So by now they've taken a lot of pictures and they've got a lot of things written down which kind of explain their recipe but what they'll need to do is use the PowerPoint recipe template which is available with this kind of scheme of work. So what they'll need to do is create the recipe book on the computer and what you'll need to do is show them the example of the PowerPoint recipe book and kind of just break down into smaller steps how to edit a, a particular text box, how to uh, save, how to um, particularly change the color of things, all right? Because it's important that students have that skill of saving their files. I mean, even now in secondary, uh, we still have some students that call their, their files uh, random names, and then they're never able to find their work. So it's good to kind of like highlight that with your students. Um, so ask the students to type their sandwich recipes into their recipe books and refer to the notes that they made uh, with the students in the previous lesson. Now, if it's easier for you, if they've only got one set of notes, maybe beforehand uh, photocopy those notes so that each student has a set. So in terms of what they'll manage to complete, uh, some students will have all their text in and they'll have their recipe done. Uh, and some students will be able to format the text that goes on in the book and explore the different font sizes. Now, um, if, you're, if you like to kind of have control and you like to make sure that students have uh, some kind of idea of where to go, uh, what might be a good opportunity for you to do here is actually create a storyboard. And then uh, for some of your lower ability students that are, ne are struggling to set, put it in a correct order is if they've got a storyboard there in front of them of what the slide's going to look like, uh, then they might have a better idea of what to do. Um, and you could even set that as homework. Alternatively, you could get the students to kind of draw pictures of their sandwich or label pictures of their sandwich and they could scan them in later on and then it's given them the skill of using the equipment. Now, once they've kind of got their recipe uh, ready and they've typed it all up and they've looked at the formatting of their slides, you might want to show the students how to insert pictures and clip art because uh, you need to remind the students that they've actually taken a whole host of images um, and they've, you need to remind them how to open up their PowerPoint fi file and find it. Uh, and don't forget to show them where, to, the, where the insert picture button is and give them the appropriate time to kind of mess around with it. And maybe for some of your higher ability students, get them to experiment with some of the picture settings that are available in Microsoft PowerPoint. So with this activity in uh, step six, it's not really too much uh, for you to do really. It's more about giving the students some creativity, uh, giving them the opportunity to explore the different image and formatting and getting their images on their slides. Now, they could explore the idea of visual instructions and draw a series of images that explain it. So even though they haven't taken the photographs, you could actually get them to sketch out uh, how to do things. So like sketch out a uh, student cutting or and you can get these scanned in at a later date so these are the type of things they can do for homework so in uh, the, one of the final steps you'll be doing is maybe you want your students to get some sound into their recipe books i mean it's good to have that sound there um some people aren't ne necessarily really good at, at reading uh, so having uh, them say it kind of helps them with their literacy so you might want to ask them why they think that sound is useful and uh, you could kind of lead towards this and say how having the sound there helps people read the words. Um, and what you can do is demonstrate how to use the microphone. So you could either just record it straight in or what you could do is find a sound recorder, save the sound separately and put it straight in. Now what I've attached is a kind of video tutorial that shows you how to record sound straight into your PowerPoint on one of the next slides and that should help you uh, show your students. Now although we've said that the students are going to be recording sound straight in, um, there's also a piece of software which you might want to investigate called Songsmith and Songsmith allows you to kind of record yourself singing and it detects the backing track. Now, if you're able to get that installed on your computers, the students could actually write their own theme tune uh, at the start of the ebook so that they've got a kind of intro to showing them how to kind of take it apart. Uh, you could also challenge the students to kind of plan another instruction book, and it doesn't necessarily have to be for a recipe this time. It could be 
uh, for playing their favorite game at home. It could be uh, for um, getting changed. It could be anything that they're interested in doing. Uh, so it's completely up to you. So if you're wanting to record a sound into your presentation, uh, rather than uh, making it difficult for some of the uh, students at the lower end, what you can do is simply go to insert and if you go to audio, you can actually record the audio straight into your presentation. And then once you press record, uh, so this should be recording what I'm saying. It tells you how many seconds you can stop it. Click on OK and there's your sound ready there. And uh, you can also change the settings by going up to the top and saying whether you want it to play automatically. Uh, so have a play around with that and uh, you can show your students how to insert some sound. So in our final step, uh, you might want to think about your preparation with this one because if you're going to get your students to test each other's algorithms out, you will need to make sure that you have the ingredients for each of those recipes. So make sure you take them home and have a look through them to see uh, what ingredients you might need. Um, and what you can do is get your students to try each other's ebooks out with those ingredients and kind of give them a peer assessment sheet that goes next to each of the tasks. So for example, you might have uh, what, was, what went well, even better if, um, and then the students can give each other some feedback and they can make those changes. So that might be really useful there. So in terms of what they do in the lesson, they're going to be giving each other a lot of feedback. But you could allocate some time, maybe in the last 15 minutes of the lesson, last 20 minutes, to actually break things down and make the changes and then kind of print those out or you can actually get the students to explain the changes they've made and you can also get the students if for homework to create an advert for their interactive book uh, and really there you can link it in with anything whether you do it with English or drama and get them kind of like performing their advert and it would be much more interactive and get them out of their seats rather than thinking everything needs to be at a computer. So what we've got here um, at the end is obviously your students need to understand what an algorithm is. Now by now they should have an idea that that is a detailed set of instructions. Now they'll need to write instructions for their recipe which they should do quite easily but they should be able to take pictures with support so that's with you giving them a hand there and they'll be able to record themselves speaking with, with support. Now, most of your students should be able to do take photos and record themselves anyway, uh, but they need to still understand that computers aren't that smart and they need and they work by following like detailed algorithms. They need to understand the amount of detail that needs to go in. All right. Now, there might be some students that are really, really uh, detailed. They're really good at their their formatting of their PowerPoint, so they might make it look good. But it's important if you're letting your students kind of be creative, uh, you still need to rein them in a little bit because there's nothing more um, like, re remember that this uh, objective is about being uh, purposeful. Now, if you get your students to have a green background with a green font, that's not really showing that they've thought about the purpose uh, because they've not really thought about their audience there. So some of the old ICT aspects are still important here. Um, but also they need to be able to explore how different tasks are carried out. So as you, as you can see before, where I said that using technology purposely, purposefully, if you haven't uh, got a good color scheme or things are really difficult to read, they haven't really made things purposely for their audience. Um, in terms of uh, what an algorithm is, they should have that. and. If you, if you really wanted to, uh, at the bottom of an assessment sheet, you could actually get them to explain what an algorithm is. Um, now, I mentioned on previous things, there's many ways of doing assessment. Now, you can do peer assessment, which is part of this unit. But while they're working, like fortnightly or, how, or every two lessons, you can give them some verbal assessment. Now, what you can do is just write VA on the child's work or, or a folder or anywhere and you can actually write the date and then if you wanted to, to show evidence of them making those changes, you can have a printout of before and after. 
um, if you're worried about showing anyone that you've made those changes. Um, don't forget, uh, you can use the curriculum reference to kind of do a what went well and even better if. So you might make a tick list of, uh, does the student understand what an algorithm is? Um, have they created a PowerPoint instead of using the word digital content? Um, have they uh, organized their files? So you could maybe teach your students how to do a, uh, a print screen that shows that all your files for this unit were organized in the correct area. So uh, there's different ways of interpreting it, but uh, there's no nothing to stop you from using the curriculum reference to kind of create uh, kind of guidance to say what was good and what they need to improve. Um, and I hope that's been useful. Um, I hope it's given you some ideas of how to approach the next one of the next units of switched on computing. Thanks for your time.